I'm not offering any guaranteed money. So you're asking someone who's played, who's scored 23 tries in 22 games, that he's not worth anything? If I could pay it, there would be, uh, I would be the first person to offer it. The deal well, being they? offered is £200 for each match they win, 50 for those they lose. Plus a bonus of up to a few thousand pounds, depending on how well the team does in the league. In addition to that, if he accepts the, the offer that, that's here, then he will get his 5,700 quid or whatever it is that he's owed. And he'll get that in a lump sum. There you are, there's a cheque. If he wants it pound notes, you can have it in pound notes. I'm asking, not demanding here, because I never demand at meetings, whether there would be a possibility for both players to be paid a thousand pound every five wins. On top of everything else? Yeah. No. Five hundred pound every five wins? No. So you're saying there's no movement? I haven't got any money. That's what I'm saying. Mm. So you're saying that the, the contracts we've discussed stand as the terms and conditions that we've agreed around this table? Yeah. And there isn't a hell of a lot of scope in there mm. for, for extra money. I wish there was. If there was more scope, then we wouldn't be, you wouldn't be talking to me, you'd be talking to the chairman, <laughs> because we wouldn't be in administration. Yeah, no. <laughs> we, we accept that. Thornhill's tough stance secures a victory, and the club's secretary sends out the signed contracts. Rovers still have a team. It's March, and the season is well underway. The old diehards are turning up, and the gate is well over 2,000. Rovers have managed to win their first three matches, but with no money to invest in new players, it's becoming an increasing struggle. All the other teams uh, in the league will have uh, strengthened in the close season. Uh, winning bonus at many of the other places is a lot higher than we were paying. Uh, but, you know, we have to cut our cloth to the income we've got. So we're asking people to play out of their skin because what we have got is a good coach. Do not let these people come here and start dictating to you on your patch. It's down to coach Steve Crooks to motivate the players. The next game is against tough opposition. Public enemy number one is Brad Davis. He is a skillful, sidestepping individual footballer. And he's a bloke, but he's going to come along here and take some money out of your pockets and take some of your glory. Do not let him. Make sure these people do not come and shit on your patch. We make a statement out there. Let's make sure we do it right. Fortified by smelling salts and the encouragement of their coach, the players put up a brave fight. Rovers struggle to hold on to the game but lose the match in the dying minutes. Swinton beat Woodness. That's good. Despite the two points lost, Rovers keep their place in the table. I think we're OK today. I think the results are going to be kind to us. However, arch-rivals Hull FC win again and move to the top. Back in London, Tim Wilby decides it's time to change his tactics. We've actually had a change of mind now. We're not actually going to go ahead and make the offer of the Old Kingston Rovers. We, we've made a change of clubs. We're actually going to go for the other club in the city, which is Hull FC. But they're going to let Edward Klemker and company have some fun trying to run a rugby league club that's in administration. Uh, I don't think they're going to find it as easy as what they think it's actually going to be. Edward, reference the Hulkingston Rovers deal. Yeah. Um, it looks at this stage as though we're going to withdraw our offer and not go any further. Okay. We've investigated the possibilities of the deal and we've decided at this present moment in time our strategy is to withdraw from the actual offer and let you get on with doing your job and see how you go on. Withdraw? Yes, we're going to okay, withdraw. Then. All right, Edward. Uh, you've done it very quickly, so... Uh... 
No, okay, that's fine. Well, all the very best with it, and good luck to your season that you've got coming in front of you. Thanks very much. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. He didn't sound too unduly disappointed, did he? Well, he didn't show it anyway. Um, so, as I say, we know what we're doing now. We know we've got our plans laid out. We've got to get on with them, and uh, we'll be speaking to Mr Clemker, no doubt, later on in the season. I knew when we started this it was going to be difficult to sell. It comes, whilst it's disappointing, it doesn't come as a shock to me. I mean, you know, who in their right mind would buy a rugby league club? Still with no money to strengthen his team, coach Steve Crooks is growing increasingly frustrated. The Super League is not going to come to all KR under the regime of what we are at the moment. Certainly under administration and with the management of the club the way it is, we need to, um, we need, I think, considerable investment. Um, an ambitious young coach, what wants to be in an ambitious industry. And um, if, if that isn't going to be forthcoming, then I might as well go back and, and um, work less hours and maybe for a little, a little bit more money, building ships or engineering. Two weeks later, and while things are looking bleak for Rovers, across the city, their rivals Hull FC are going from strength to strength. They now have an ambitious new owner and chairman. There's only one way forward for this club, and that is into Super League Rugby League. Property speculator Tim Wilby has bought control of his old club, and the team's been given a new name to match its new ambitions. And the highest level possible uh, professional rugby league in this country is to be in Super League, and that's where we intend to go. I'm now chairman of Hull Football Club. That's part one of what I'm trying to do. Part two now is to acquire Hull Kingston Rovers, which will give me merge the two clubs together, which will give me automatic Super League status, which is what I'm after. I want a Super League franchise in Hull. Um, Hull are currently at the moment are doing quite well. They're top of the first division, um, but I'm not leaving things to chance. If you control both uh, Hull Sharks and uh, Hull Kingston Rovers, um, the Rugby League would almost certainly guarantee membership to Super League and all of a sudden you're playing for £900,000 worth of uh, uh, Sky money. If he owns Hull Sharks on its own, he may not get promotion. Uh, and probably what he'll do is wait till the end of the season to decide exactly what he wants to do. Because um, if he can get uh, promotion under his own steam, he will do. If he can't, no doubt he'll come knocking on our door with an increased offer. The tough-talking new owner at Hull Sharks is causing panic among the Rovers fans. They now see a new threat to their beloved club. There's no such word in this town, really, in this city as a merger. It would be a takeover, and the strongest club would win at the end of the day. And unfortunately, we're not the strongest club at the moment. I'm not happy. We need to get a bit of mongrel into us. Not just talk. Not just the rumours unsettle the players and Rovers have lost their last three matches. Yes, as one bloke says to me last night, while he's walking his dog in town, what went on? What went on? Can't you get a grip of them? It fucking hurts me. It hurts me. I get passionate about this fucking game, what we play. I get passionate about what we're trying to do here. We cannot afford, we cannot afford to let anything go. Not at all. We've got to be looking at nothing other than a win. It's the end of April, and there's a surprise for Klempke. A new buyer has turned up, but he's using agents to keep his identity secret. He's a leading sports personality. His business is sport, his past has been sport, and his future will be sport. I usually don't negotiate with people who don't disclose their principal. I've um, accepted their assurances that he is a superstar. Rugby league is on such a, an upward spiral, and it, it's sort of like gone from the UM62 corridor to a, sort of like a worldwide game. Yeah. What we want to do is with, with people like Steve Crooks, who's re again regarded as, as one of the best coaches in the world, 
arguably. Um, we want to sort of like take it from where they are now and get up into Super League first and foremost. And They're talking about £600,000. We've asked for a million. Um, but we have here an interested party who's come out of the blue, made no approaches until quite recently, but yet maintained they've been looking at it for some time. I start just wondering if it's actually um, perhaps merger in another disguise. What guarantees have we got that a week after we do a deal, there's not a merger with, say, another club in Hull? There's only one other club. And all of a sudden, the thing that we've done the deal for um, is no longer binding. Well, well, maybe we have to look, maybe we have to say to ourselves, if that eventuality did happen, and there's no way in our plans that that should happen, but let's take your logic. Maybe, and we haven't discussed this now, because this, you know, this is new things coming in, coming in, and we may have to adjourn to discuss ourselves and talk to our principals. My gut feeling is it's, um, uh, it's the same party who came to see us previously, but uh, in different clothes. You mean Tim Wilby? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Klempke knows how much more of a prize Rovers has become for Wilby, who could get automatic promotion to Super League by merging Rovers with Hull Sharks. But as the administrator, Klempke has to try to ensure that Rovers will survive as a separate club. Now, the, the only thing that we're stumbling on at the moment is the continued existence of Hulkingston <coughs> Rovers as a rugby league club. We can use our best endeavours to take over a club run it financially viable and get it and achieve as best we can. But what, what, what we can't do is give you guarantees or restrictions on how the business will be run in the future. I don't want waffly best endeavours. I want something pretty solid that I can rely on that convinces me you're not running out of this room to another room and signing up with somebody else. And I need something in a formula that gives you all the things that you want, but gives me what I want. But no more than you're putting in at the moment. You're putting none in at the moment. You're not guaranteeing that Hunkins are always going to continue. All you're saying is you're going to continue at the end of the year. And after that, you don't know what you're going to do. We, we said at the very outset that the manager, as far as we're concerned, is a very good manager. The best, you say, maybe in the league, etc., etc., etc. But the club is still in administration. So you, it's very, very difficult to guarantee. I mean, we can spend a fortune on new players. We can bring in a bit. And the manager we have at the moment is, a quite, is probably one of the best. But at the end of the day, if the players don't win the matches, we could, yeah, we could just fall right out of the league altogether. Now then, what do we do? What I don't understand is um, your reluctance to consider the point I'm making. What you said is though that, that in, in, in two sides is one, you, you want the continuation of Hull KR as a rugby league club, wherever they play. Yeah. That's first and foremost. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that, okay. Why don't we go into a separate room, leave you guys here to chew it over? Um, the numbers aren't that far apart, providing you uh, beat us halfway on the 650 million. Uh, the, well, we've the, already gone. <laughs> we've already gone.